hi everyone i am claire de souza and i run our global employer brand activities at lloyd's register so that essentially means i am responsible for attracting great talent to our organization and telling everyone why we are a great place to work so i'm going to talk to you today a little bit about what we do and about our history and then introduce some of the great people that work here so to start us off with who are we so we are a professional services company and we help to make the world a safer place. So we started off a really long time ago, 260 years ago, making sure that ships were safe enough to sail and to operate. So today we have grown and we are a global company working across 70 different countries with over 60,000 customers and 6,000 employees. We work on some amazing projects around the world. So for example, the world's largest crane vessel and we help to build ships all over the world too, as well as working with the United Nations because we care about the planet that we live on. Not only that, but we also have our own charitable foundation that gives back and supports projects across the world. And we have a special project that we're supporting in Africa at the moment called Mercy Ships, which are special hospital ships that give free healthcare to some of the poorest communities and people across the world. So why do we do all of this? Well, we have one purpose, that drives all of our people every single day, and that's working together for a safer world. So a little bit about our history. So back in the 18th century, there were no standards for the construction or the safe operation of ships. So by making sure that ships are both built and maintained to the right standard, classification means that we can reduce risk and help to prevent the loss of life and property at sea. So this was really why Lloyd's Register was formed. We were founded way back in 1760 and started off as a register society formed by customers in a coffee house and we employed retired sea captains to inspect vessels, so the ships, calling at 16 different UK ports and they would then go and classify them according to their condition. We were named after the owner of that coffee house who was called Ebbard Lloyd, so Lloyd's Register. And a little bit of a fun fact for you, another company that was formed at the same coffee shop was Lloyd's of London, who are an insurance company. So sometimes people will mistake us and think we are an insurance company, Lloyd's of London, rather than who we are, Lloyd's Register. So all the information back then was presented in a really special register of ships. And the very first register book was printed in 1764 and that was published to give both underwriters and merchants an idea of all the vessels of the ships that they owned, they insured, or they chartered to sent out to sea. Since then, we've gone on to certify hundreds of ships around the world. So here are a few of them. So we've got the Savannah, which was built in 1818, and that was a second steamer that we classed, and she was built actually in America and took 29 days to cross the Atlantic and arrive in Liverpool. We've got the Sirius, who was built a few years later in 1837. And actually, this was the very first iron ship that we classed. And iron was such a new material at the time that we classed the ship as being experimental. You might know this one. So this is the Cutty Sark. Um, so we said that this was a composite ship, which means that the ship was made out of wood and iron. And this is a tea clipper. Um, so this ship could sail over 300 miles a day. It's a really fast ship. And as Today, we would say the ship would be as fast as a modern general cargo ship. The Lizzie Leslie uh, was built a few years later in 1870 and was actually the first ship to receive the class notation 100 A1. So if you ever hear the phrase A1, that's where that comes from. So we don't only certify ships. We also test chains, cables and anchors. And with the Titanic, another ship that you might have heard of, um, we actually tested the Titanic's anchor, but not the ship itself. So this is a picture of the anchor coming out of the dockyard going towards the ship. So today we inspect and certify many things, including nuclear power installations on behalf of governments all over the world and ships from start to finish. So this is a video of uh, con the construction of an offshore supply ship.
shipping has evolved with society and today there are all sorts of different types of ships that talk that address all of the different needs that we have from tankers and car carriers to cruise liners, container ships, bulk carriers. The global shipping actually transports 90% of the goods that the world consumes today. So our colleagues around the world work with the maritime industry to support the shape, safe ship construction and we make sure that ships and service are safe. As global sustainability concerns grow, we also help the maritime industry with decarbonisation, and this is something we will continue to support with in the future too. We have some incredible people that work here, so I'm going to hand over to them to talk about their journeys at Lloyd's Register, starting with Kirsten, who joined us as a graduate and became a marine surveyor. Thank you, Claire. Um, hi everyone, my name's Kirsten and I'm currently the Executive Assistant to the CEO at Lloyd's Register, a role I've had for the past 18 months. However, prior to this, I was a ship surveyor, both constructing and surveying and operation the extremely large ships you've just seen in the last couple of slides from Claire. My decision to pursue a career in maritime was a deliberate one. I always knew I wanted to study engineering and I grew up in a family of fishermen and seafarers so naval architecture seemed a natural choice for me. When I visited university the naval architecture department was friendly and welcoming and the enthusiasm of the professors for their subject matter was infectious. Something this passion for the industry is something that really hooks you in and I've experienced since day one. I was introduced to Lloyd Register while I was studying. We were using the rules to design ships and this was something that really interested me and it led me to apply for a summer placement with them and that finally led to my uh, career as a ship surveyor. The most exciting part of working with ships is you never know what each day is going to bring. Ships are working in some of the harshest environments in the world and you, they need to be able to withstand whatever the weather throws at them. LR plays a key role in ensuring these ships are designed and operated safely and as a surveyor we are responsible for upholding these standards. Climbing down the ladders into the structure of a vessel for the first time, you never know what you're going to find. For me, the best part of shipping is the people that you work with every day. It is truly a global industry, which offers the opportunity to work with people from all around the world. As a surveyor, the worst part is definitely the thick, smelly mud found at the bottom of ballast tanks. We can spend hours down there climbing around and it can be really, really exhausting. I joined LR in 2011 and as part of the graduate program and my training was extremely diverse. I spent time within the UK both working on board vessels and within our technical teams in the office and I also received practical training in welding and machinery maintenance, something that was completely new to me and extremely fun. I've been very fortunate to travel around the world with my job, working throughout Europe, the Middle East, Singapore and latterly South Korea. I spent some time in Dubai and exposure to shipyard life there and the enormous tankers and gas carriers I was working on informed my decision to take up a place in Singapore as a surveyor. The ships in Singapore arrived 24 hours a day and life as a surveyor can often be extremely hectic but extremely rewarding. Working closely with a team of colleagues we would co cover not only the extremely busy shipyards but also the never-ending stream of vessels that arrive at the anchorage each day. A rite of passage for every young surveyor is their first unsupervised survey. Mine was on an oil tanker anchored off the coast of Singapore. I remember the feeling of excitement and nervousness as I sat on a tiny little boat transporting me out to a huge ship. I climbed the pilot ladder and introduced myself to the captain. When I successfully completed the survey and handed over the signed certificate at the end of the day, it felt like a huge achievement and a massive milestone in my career. Following Singapore, my next move was to South Korea and into the vast new construction shipyards. In the four years I worked there, I never tired of watching steel plate being turned into engineering masterpieces. The scale and complexity of the projects I worked on is very difficult to describe. While I was there, I spent a year working with a ship owner focused solely on the construction of LNG cargo tanks. 
These are extremely specialist tanks which carry liquid gas at a temperature of minus 163 degrees Celsius. This is cold enough that should a single drop of this liquid escape from the tank and touch the ship's structure, it could cause serious damage. So very, very safety critical. Working together with the shipyards and the designers, it was an extremely proud moment when we finally closed the tanks, waved goodbye to the ship as she sailed away from the shipyard, ready to safely transport her first cargo. The opportunity arose for me then to move back to the UK to become executive assistant to the CEO. While I was very sad to be hanging up my overalls and hard hat, it was too good an experience to let it pass me by. So coming from the shipyard, I've now spent the last 18 months learning how a large multinational company is run and the complexities of difficult decision making. Taking on this role will hopefully prove to be a vital stepping stone for me. As I've progressed throughout my career, I've been supported along the way by some exceptional colleagues, including mentors from within LR who are always ready to provide advice on potential next steps. When I reflect back, I realize how being open to new challenges from the very beginning has got me to where I am today. Being a surveyor taught me not only the technical aspects of ship construction and operation, but also the importance of teamwork and communication, something the shipping industry is so reliant upon. As I look forward, I'm extremely excited for the industry to take on the challenge of decarbonization and the new technologies that are emerging. One thing is certain, I will continue to be open to it ever opportunities come my way. Thank you for listening to me and I would like to hand over to my colleague Oegbi and she's going to share some of her experience of life at LR. Thank you Kirsten. So um, like Kirsten I actually joined Lloyd's Register on the graduate scheme as well but on what was slightly different. So at the time when I joined we had two schemes one which is mainly marine based and I actually joined in the energy one so slightly different but a couple years down the line we've actually merged into one business stream so we're marine and offshore. At, when I started school I had no no idea what I wanted to do I just knew I really liked math I liked numbers I liked solving problems and speaking to my mum and some career advisors like right what, what, what can I do with all these these are random things I like can I do something out of this and engineering stood out to me so I actually went to university and studied chemical engineering with energy engineering and yeah same again five years did a master's and still had no clue what I wanted to do with that so started doing research into different jobs, careers, and I actually stumbled across Lloyd's Register. So I joined the company by accident. I had no clue about the, how vast and important the maritime industry was or how old Lloyd's Register is, 260 years. And I'd never, well, 250 at the time, and I'd never heard of this great diverse company. Applied, was lucky enough to get the job and it was quite nice being on the scheme and getting to try out different things before I decided what I wanted to do. So I did a bit of design. So looking at drawings of, well, mostly vessels, so pressure retaining vessels, and then ships that produce production storage units. And then I did some bits on risk. So like what Kirsten mentioned with the LNG, if you have so much leaks on the structure, it could completely damage it. And then you need to think how big is that impact going to be? How many people might you hurt? Or how big could that explosion or impact be? And then I started doing surveying. Quite nice to get coveralls on. And I like being practical. I like having a mix of being in the office and being out in sight and actually meeting different people. Ooh, what do I like about my job? I just, I really like the variety. So you can come in one day, everything's fine, easy to look at some drawings, go out, um, inspect some equipment on the ship. And then you get some days where everything is just going wrong and you're in problem solving mode is how can we fix this? How can we help the clients and the people you get to meet? So I had the opportunity to work in South Korea uh, different countries in Europe and 
also in Nigeria and West Africa, so been out on some floating production storage units there. So not as cold as the North Sea, so I quite like it, but it's good seeing the variety and how different vessels look this different or the same where they are. Um, oh, so something that stood out for me, a project. So one of the first things I actually did when I joined Lloyd's Register was looking at the design for this container, which holds um, oil and gas. And fast forward four years down the line, and I actually got to see that pressure vessel on this platform be move from being a drawing into a full on massive producing FPS. So seeing that get constructed and commissioned in the yard, best, best experience of my life and definitely the most memorable. And one thing that sticks out to me is I was actually, when I finished my graduate scheme, which is about three or four years down the line, I knew had this particular job I to, was told I was going to do risk consulting. It's great. I love risk. I love numbers. But um, a week after I was offered that position, it, it was no longer available within LR. And I just remember being so disappointed and disheartened, but spoke like there's so many great people, spoke to um, a mentor of mine and he said, right, we've got this job here. If you're interested, you can try it for a while. If you don't like it, you can move on. And four years down the line, I'm technically still here and I now manage my own team of surveyors. So you just never know what's around the corner. So do be open to opportunities. Some people have a plan of what they want to do and sometimes you do just stumble into it. So I would say be open to opportunities. You never know what's around the corner and definitely made me resilient and excited for trying and seeing new things. And just really excited about the industry, like what Kirsten said, it's changing. I work mostly on energy producing vessels, but we've got the challenge of the energy transition and decarbonization and how exciting so much that you can do and get involved in. And I'm going to pass you on to our colleague Jeannie, who deals with brand and marketing for us. Thank you, Oyegbe. Afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeannie Ivanov. I'm the, the marketing director for the marine and offshore um, business stream within Lloyd's Register. So my job is to look after, as Iagbe says, the brand, which is a quite a daunting job, uh, given that it is 260 years old, uh, but also to make sure that we are um, set up with a strategy for growth for the next 260 years um, by making sure that we understand the market, what the market's doing and how we can speak to that market. So I've been here for about two and a half years um, and my background is quite different to, to the, the women that you've heard before me. So I'm an, an arts graduate. I did English literature at university uh, and I, for various different reasons, after that I did a bit of traveling in Africa and then I joined the Vodafone Graduate Scheme um, at their head, headquarters in Newbury where I still live today. Uh, I did a few years at Vodafone and then I spent some time in China um, traveling around and ran my own marketing agency over in China. Came back to the UK, a bit more Vodafone and then went to Virgin Media. So when I, I was actually approached um, by a recruiter um, by on behalf of LR because they were looking to build out their marketing organization, make it stronger and they needed to, somebody to come in and, and build that team and create a stronger sort of marketing infrastructure in the business because for quite a long time, uh, we'd relied on having that 260 year old brand um, to carry us through. Um, like many people, I didn't know much about Lloyd's Register when I had the interview. I actually first thought of um, banking and insurance, but I did my research and the safety and sustainability mission and the history um, and the value of the brand um, really interested me, especially because Vodafone and Virgin won't feel like it to you, but they're actually quite young brands. So Vodafone's only been around for about 25 years, uh, Virgin about the same. So it's a very different uh, marketing model, very different way that we speak to our, um, our market um, than jobs I've done before. So the best bit about working for Lloyd's is, and I think um, my colleagues have mentioned it, I, I came into Lloyd's with no idea about the, the world of maritime and how critical it is um, to global trade, um, to daily life, and particularly to the UK economy. Um, so we've got a really, really rich maritime heritage in the UK, um, a really proud heritage, be it through the dockyards, through our Navy, 
um, shipbuilding that we've done and, and now through operation of vessels and classification as we do uh, vessels. Um, and that's really exciting. 50% of all the food you eat will have come into the UK on a ship. Um, as one of my colleagues said, 90% of all goods and services globally um, come in uh, and move via, via ships. Um, and the lives of the people who work on those ships and work for the organisations like ours that make sure they can operate correctly are, are really fascinating. Um, and, and if you have been interested in what we said today, I'd, I'd urge you to go and do a little bit of reading um, about that world because it is, it is really fascinating. Um, on that point, the worst moment I've had since I joined the business was very early on. I was in Rotterdam, Rotterdam Harbour. I've done some great travel while I've been with LR. And I referred to an enormous 6,000 berth cruise ship as a boat and was very quickly shot down by one of my colleagues who reminded me that boats is on the side of ships. Um, so I need to be very careful to make sure that I respect my colleagues uh, and the language of, of maritime. I learned that very early and made sure that I did. Um, so yeah, so that's my career sort of thus far and my, my journey with Lloyd's. Um, in terms of how I've kind of built that career, um, I do these days I've got two or three good friends who've had similar career paths to me and I, I like to bounce ideas or decisions off them. They helped me make my decision about leaving Virgin and going to Lloyd's Register. I think sometimes it's easy to be completely honest with friends or maybe family um, about your motivations and concerns when you're making career choices, but it's definitely important as well to speak to colleagues, find a couple of good mentors um, in your business or in your life um, and speak to them regularly so they really understand um, the detail of the choices that you're making. And don't discount the advice of your parents. Um, sometimes I have because my mum's a teacher, she does something completely different to me but she sees things that perhaps other people don't see when I'm trying to make decisions about my career. And that applies now just as much as it did when I was in my uh, early career, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, also, you know, finding a job that is exciting and that you have variety and I think is really important. I like and Kirsten both mentioned, they love the variety of their job, so do I. Um, and I also love, you know, solving really big problems um, with colleagues and with the industry. At the moment, that is definitely the big one and the project that I'm really enjoying working on is how we ensure that all of the ships that sail in the world today by 2050 are sailing using zero carbon or zero emission fuels. So they reduce their carbon footprint and make sure that we can maintain healthy, clean oceans and address the climate emergency. That is a massive challenge. There are hundreds of thousands of vessels, tens of thousands of vessels in the global world fleets. Um, and at the moment, they run generally on quite dirty, heavy fuel oil. Um, so we're helping along with industry colleagues to make sure that the right fuels and the right ships are there um, to clean up um, our oceans and to make sure that we can continue to, to operate as a clean industry as the world addresses its, its climate challenge. And with that, I think I'll hand back over to Claire or maybe to the moderator. But thanks ever so much for having me and, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions now. Thanks, Jeannie. So, yeah, we've got, that's the end of our presentation. So, if you've got time for any questions, then send them our way. Lovely. Um, a couple of questions, um, I think, to all four of you. Um, that's fantastic. You've made uh, engineering sound brilliant and also very, um, very accessible for women to enter into the industry. And um, how does it, is it an industry that's changing and is it easier for women to get into this sort of industry? Probably a question for either Kirsten. Yeah, or... I'll leave that one to Kirsten. Oh, yeah. I have views, but I, I don't have first hand views. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a really good, a really good question. I have found shipping to be an incredibly inclusive industry to work in. Prize face when you turn up on a ship, but generally everyone has been extremely welcoming and more intrigued as to why, as a woman, you've chosen to work in maritime than saying anything negative. I'm not sure, Owegbe, if you've had the same experience. Um, yeah, I think I would. It's, it's the same. People are you, you become are quite intrigued in why you've decided to do this, and I think they become quite impressed when you're down there in the tanks or up in the crane with them. It's like, okay, women can do this as well, so it's fine, and you just become one of the gang actually, which is quite nice. I would just add as a slightly different perspective. I think that in Lloyd's Register in the industry, technical expertise and knowledge and sorry, my caps does this. Um, 
and experience uh, speaks louder than, than anything else. So I think that's why, as Kirsten and say, you can you can gain that um, the credibility and, and be, be accepted because they do have that fantastic expertise that applies in in my world as well. Um, my I'd say the main challenge in the industry in the industry is in, in a lot of the, the debates and the panels and the events and the sort of client meetings that I tend to j join in with, they are very male dominated. So not specifically the engineering elements of Lloyd's Register, but the industry as a whole. And the only way to change that is to have more women progressing through into senior executive roles. Um, at the moment, I think in, in maritime as a whole, it's about 3%. So I would really encourage um, women to, to not only enter the industry, but to look for opportunities to make sure that their, their, their presence and their profile is felt at all levels actually of the organization um, to make sure that we get that slightly broader representation um, in, in a whole variety of roles as well as engineering. And thank you. That's it. Yes, you all four of you are fantastic um, ambassadors for women in, in, in maritime and marine. So thank you for that. And um, one final quick question. Um, you both, uh, engineering one specifically, you both mentioned doing degrees. Are there other, other routes into the industry that you'd like to highlight for those people that perhaps don't want to do necessarily a degree? Um, yes, yeah, so there are apprenticeships which are more hands-on and practical. I know for some people they like getting stuck in and actually just doing the job and maybe don't like the university route. So I would definitely recommend having a look at different apprenticeships. Lots, loads of companies run different schemes and or even coming in for a week or shadowing someone. So there are lots of opportunities like that. I don't know if okay. anything to add, Kirsten. Yeah, I would just say to not discount the um, career of a seafarer. Um, we used to have a massive seafaring community in the UK, and it, sadly, it's been reducing every year. But the people that I've met on board ships, they really, really love their jobs, and they're so passionate about it. And I think if you if you enjoy the sea and you enjoy being practical, either in an engine room or on the deck navigating, then it's definitely a very exciting career that lets you see the world um, and progress. One day you could be the captain of a, of a ship. <laughs>